This is actually going to be quite a, a, a sort of wide spanning interview to sort of replicate what you were talking about um, during the presentation. Okay. Um, I first, want to sort of get into the, uh, the mathematical aspects that you were talking about for judging what the, the level cap should have been for four is a four. And obviously, enough, you're now changing that to level 999. But can you sort of discuss with us about, about, about that mathematical equation, how you guys break that down, how you work that out? So we had a lot of people in our community playing Forza Motorsport 3, and they were playing it for about two years leading into Forza Motorsport 4, and we got a lot of data from this group of players we call rabbits. And the reason we call them rabbits is because they're so fast. They're playing the game constantly. They're playing seasons uh, that they, they arrange themselves. They're playing in leagues, and they played a lot of Forza Motorsport 3. So we collected this data on how much XP, how many miles they were racing per week on average, and we built a curve of what we think a rabbit would do in about nine months. And that's what we built in to be level 150. For Forza Motorsport 4, we assumed that our rabbits would stay fairly constant. They would play this many hours a week and this many months out of the year, and that would be how it worked out. Turns out that the, the rabbits, these players, that really hardcore fan base that love Forza Motorsport, are playing twice as much in Forza Motorsport 4. So they blew through our nine month goal in less than four months. Well, that allowed us though to develop a new math model. We actually looked at how they played for the last four months and we said, okay, so now there's a new definition of, of what, uh, how quickly a rabbit plays. And that allowed us to put the cap uh, or a new ladder tree in there. So we, we actually were looking at maybe raising it up into the 700 level, which is mathematically right about where 12 months should be at this new rate. But then we thought, well, if we're going to make it 700, why not make it 999? Uh, it doesn't require any changes to the UI. It's just a numerical change. And when you're sort of measuring that, is it, is it just the amount of hours the guy, these guys are putting in? Is it exactly what they're doing in the game and what they're clocking off, what they're ticking off on a day-to-day -day level? I mean, how, how, how do you rate that? Well, actually, we had to look at all of them because we, we weren't sure what the right measurement was going to be. So we basically looked at uh, hours on track, because all the things that are logged in the profile are generally logged into the cloud. Now they're disassociated with actual IDs, so we actually don't know who these people are. We don't actually have the Zooid. It's just kind of a generic, like, hey, here's the information about kind of generic person. But it's still great data mining. So we were looking at how many hours they were playing in a week, how much XP they were actually earning in given races over the course of a week. We looked over the month. We were looking for trends about whether things were going up or going down or were they repeating. Uh, we really tried to look at what the right metric was. And it, it ended up being a blended approach. So we actually built on the people that have gotten the farthest so far, as well as the player who has logged the most XP in a given week. And we assumed that the perfect rabbit was a little bit of both. They were starting from the highest plateau, and they were going to maintain that highest weekly average for the next 12 months. It's kind of an unrealistic expectation, but at the same time, we thought we were being very realistic with 150. That turned out to be incorrect. But it must be a huge compliment to you guys to actually see that curve being completely shattered that these guys are putting this amount in. <laughs> there, let me tell you, there's never a time I'm more happy to be wrong. Um, the reason that people are shattering this is because they're really enjoying the game. Is it DLC? Is it uh, Rivals mode? Is it Hoppers? Is it uh, Public Lobbies? I don't know what it is. I'm just really excited that people are enjoying the game so much. And then also seeing the way people have returned to the game. There have been some fantastic games that have come out since Forza Motorsport 4 did. You know, Call of Duty's been great, Skyrim's been great, and we see people go away from our community. We'll see a dip in the numbers, and then three weeks later, bam, they return right back to where they were. So it just shows the kind of sticking power that uh, this kind of car passion has for, for a, a certain type of gamer. Well, I mean, that, that's, you're, you're mentioning Call of Duty. I mean, most people would see that Call of Duty and FIFA are the two mainstays that will go on year in, year out. And you could pretty much quantify Forza as that, as, as the car version of that. Because you, you mentioned in the presentation, you could actually actively see the dips yeah. of uh, the audience and then coming back in straight away afterwards. I mean, the maintaining that, is, is that a case of you guys feel like it, it's what you've created with Forza 4? That, that, that's the selling point, that's why these people are coming back? Well, you know, that's what we hope, obviously. I don't think we know exactly why they're returning. I think DLC does help out because it gives them something to return to. I think clubs helped, it gives them a social gathering. I think that the, uh, the new modes like Top Gear Soccer 
I think that's helped. It just gives them something fun to kind of get a break from everything else. I think it's kind of all of those things combined that have returned to this group that has obviously an innate car passion. They just love cars. Um, I'm not saying they're not playing some of these other games as well. I really don't know what else they're doing. But what's clear is they return back after the initial surge of playing uh, some of these other games. I mean, I've seen you discuss and talk about Forza and sort of wider motorsports uh, for quite some time now. And the, the, what I'm saying is the great thing is you're genuinely passionate about it. And certainly ex, 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 the, the phrase that you coined sounds like a perfect thing for a back of a box, turning the car lovers into gamers, gamers. But that's, that's what you genuinely feel. And um, how, uh, looking back on the career now that you've, you've brought with Forza and certainly your own career with, with games, do you feel like you still have that, that resonant and passion for it? Absolutely. I still love cars. Um, I, and the truth is, we are committed to pushing. You know, we push with things like the Porsche pack. We never gave up. We wanted to get Porsche into the game, and so we kept working at it. And doesn't mean it was going to happen, but we were going to keep trying. And the changes we're doing with Title Update 3 to multiplayer, to PI, to raising the level cap, it's because we care. We pay attention. We want to nurture that. We're very passionate about it. We add all these cars because we love cars. We're passionate about cars. But the biggest thing is we want to push innovation, innovation and quality all the time. And that keeps me very anxious about coming to work because we're not done. We're not done by a long shot. When I talk about that vision of actually making a difference in car culture, making a difference in gaming culture, I mean, come on, that's an that's a almost laughable goal. It's so big. But that doesn't mean I don't want to try. And it gets me excited to come into work and say, you know, oh, we got to make hard decisions. That's part of game development. We've got to work our asses off. We've got to come into work every day for a lot of hours. But the reason I come in, the reason I'm passionate is because I look at that goal and I say, I don't know how we're going to achieve it, but we're going to take one more step towards it. And do you feel, you mentioned sort of obviously enough the season pass for Forza is sort of coming to an end and obviously enough going, transferring into Forza Horizon. Do you, but do you, is this you stepping back from Forza 4 now? Is it like a case of you, those car packs come out, season pass ends, you've got Porsche in the, in, in the game now. Is that almost like you're drawing a line under that to carry on to Forza, the next Forza? No, not at all, actually. It's just that we haven't actually announced our DLC plans post the season pass. So when I mentioned that season pass ends in April, that's just because, well, it does. Um, now, as far as what else we would release regarding Forza Motorsport 4 with DLC, we just haven't announced it. But I would say by no means is our intention to actually say be done with Forza 4. Our belief is that these games are going to speak to car passion. They may speak to different people, they may speak to the same people in different ways, but our goal is not actually to make disposable games, it never has been. Our hope is that we make games that you play and you play and you play and you can be part of the community and you find that passion in yourself. Now that flavor may be different from one title to the next. Again, not announcing details, but we don't see this as a replacement. It's not even a sequel. Right? This isn't uh, Harry Potter 1, 2, 3. Forza Motorsport, this, we, this is not Forza Motorsport 5. This is Forza Horizon. Um, and one thing again that came across in the presentation about the passion that you had, talking about um, the unfortunate events that have happened to a lot of the, the studios in the UK, you mentioned Bazaar and such. And w was that almost uh, a reason, we obviously I can't talk about specifics, but why you, you went for this partnership, that these are people that you um, have a great deal of respect for, like you mentioned the games like McRae, Dirt, Toka, and reached out to them to say, listen, it's almost like a, a supportive role. Maybe supportive role is maybe not the best term to use, but in that you're wanting to have this partnership to, to continue that, um, the car, or sorry, the racing development within the UK. Well, you know, I think I should make something very, very clear. You know, we weren't doing this to save or help or anything like that. These guys are amazing. Playground Games is a great group of developers, and the people that they've hired from these other teams are great additions to their studio, so they're fantastic. The truth is, we were looking for a great partner, and we were worried, were we going to be able to find a great partner? And out of nowhere came this group that were looking for a publisher who had a shared vision about making quality, quality games, and really doing something big. Man, that was a match made in heaven. Now, they didn't have the team yet, but we had faith in their what they were saying. We had faith in who they were because of their pedigree at Codemasters. And then as they started bringing in people from BlackRock and from Bazaar, it wasn't we were trying to save people. I, I mean, 
Am I happy those people got jobs? Absolutely, I know a lot of them and I really care about it. But the reason that we greenlit this and move forward is because they're so strong and we're just really excited about having their take on our franchise and having them adopt our franchise as their own. Is there sort of a, maybe not fear as such, but because, because you're sharing that vision with, with people, with, with a different team than yourselves, is there that sort of th clutching at the franchise goes, it's almost, we, we trust these guys, but at the same time, we're having to give up our baby. You know, I think this comes back to even the question regarding um, just innovation in general, and, and in many ways, the motivation that brings me to work. A lot of that is that I look at this vision we have and say, how are we ever going to achieve this? We just need to put one step in front of the other. And the moment you see a challenge that way, someone standing next to you is not a competitor. They're a companion. They're helping you out. So I don't see any com competition with them at all. To me, it's like, great, another great group of guys to help us achieve this. That's fantastic. And as far as clutching versus not, I think what it would come down to is if I didn't have faith in them, of course I'd be worried. We've worked very hard to build up this tremendous franchise. It's got a lot of equity. We've got a lot of fans that love our franchise and really believe in us. And of course, I wouldn't want to throw that away. So I don't take it lightly to have them help us out. But to me, there's no competition at all. They're really strong, and we want them on our team. Well, I think that's about, uh, I'm, I'm getting the motion here, so I think that's about all the time we come up. But again, thank you so much indeed. Being an absolute pleasure talking to you, and look forward to seeing what you're doing next. Cheers.